Today we're going to replace the power supply, and we have a computer, and some of the symptoms are very intermittent. Sometimes it will boot, sometimes it won't. Um, sometimes, you know, it will be running and it'll just reboot all by itself, um, and that's usually a, a pretty good sign of a bad power supply. Possibly bad memory, but it seems more like a, a bad power supply. So let's see what's going on. It's powered up right now, but there's no video signal you can see on the monitor. So we're going to open it up. And the fans are spinning, and it's powered to some degree. You know, the lights are on, the NIC interface is, is blinking there. But in spite of all that, um, you know, a power supply can, can go bad without going completely bad. And sometimes they don't all go bad, but maybe one of those voltages can go bad. The, the things in the power supply, the components that regulate the voltage, capacitors, resistors, diodes, um, sometimes they can die due to you know, excessive heat or chip creep when the solder heats up and the metal expands and then it cools off and contracts. Components can come loose. There's all kinds of things that, that can go wrong um, you know, to cause a bad power supply. Could have been a power surge, a lightning storm. Could have been a power surge just from the power company or even a voltage sag or a brownout. You know, too many of those can actually damage components. But a, a, a bad power supply is, is, is a very common problem with a desktop computer. So fans are spinning, it's powered up, but there's no video signal. And I've tried rebooting it several times and it won't boot. And I'm gonna go ahead and power it down now. And we're just gonna take this front cover off here. And this particular brand of computer is just an average store-bought HP computer. Pull the top channel off there. And I'm just gonna slide out this additional bay. And, and this machine has four hard drives hooked up. But I wanna get to the components inside where the power supply is plugged in. So I'm gonna slide this back. This is a serial ATA drive with a SATA connector. I'm just gonna unplug that. And this is an IDF drive, and it's daisy chained with a Molex power connector. And when you replace your power supply, you just wanna make sure that you get the right kind, that it has all the connections that you need. So, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect these hard drives here. And this is the main power lead here that supplies voltage to the main board. And if it's a modern computer, it also has a P2 connector. And these clip on, you can see where the clips go. So you put them on right, and also there's, you know, the pens are shaped differently. Some are rounded, some are square. So that'll let you know if you're connecting things properly. But um, this supplies 12 volts, and this supplies all three voltages, three and a half, five, and 12, to the main board. I also have a, a power supply tester here. It's kind of a useful tool if I make sure the power supply is turned off there. But I'm just going to plug this in, and these are relatively inexpensive. You can order them from Tiger Direct or all kinds of places, but um, they can let you test voltages. In this case, I want to test 12 volts and 5 and 3.3 volts. Let me go turn this on. And this one's having intermittent issues here, but I can tell that you know something's going on with, with my voltages here. Sometimes it'll boot, sometimes it won't, sometimes I get those voltages and sometimes I don't. <clears throat> so I'm going to remove this power supply. And I just want to disconnect the components. So I'm going to disconnect the Molex connectors from the hard drive. And go ahead and disconnect the cable here. I'll just leave that bay out. And not much to it. They're usually held in by four screws in the back. So I'll pop those out. One. Two. And three in this case. Well, let me grab that last. this guy out some. 
I'm gonna have to kind of move this out a little bit as well. Just kind of loosen that a little bit. So slide that back. And just want to disconnect. These are Molex connectors, or this is actually for a serial ATA drive, but um, if you have SATA, I have in this case two parallel ATA or EI, uh, IDE drives and two SATA drives. So again, you want to make sure your replacement supply has all the things you need to power the components in your computer. So the main board main power supply I need, the P2 connector I need, these 4-pin Molex connectors I need, and the some more Molex and these serial ATA connectors. So I just need to make sure that my, my new power supply has all that. This is a 500 watt, by the way. You also don't want to underpower it. Modern computers, you probably don't want to go under 500 watts. Um, in this case, the replacement supply is 650 watts. And now, a lot of computers are underpowered when they come from the manufacturer. So if you upgrade the video card or you add extra hard drives, um, a lot of times that can also give you power supply issues. It can either kill your power supply or give you all kinds of intermittent problems due to not having enough power to power like the video card. And again, I want to insert the power supply in here and I'm going to want to mount it first and then I just want to connect everything. So I'm going to pop these screws back in. difficult to do and this is a very common task that you know I mean a lot of times you can keep a desktop purring smoothly for six or seven years as, you know as long as the hardware stays relevant enough to run modern software um, and you may you know, you'll occasionally want to it's, it's kind of common for power supplies to go bad maybe every three or four years so it's a pretty common task especially if you have an older desktop that you keep upgrading and adding new components to but you haven't yet replaced the power supply and also those newer components as you upgrade it are going to draw more power. Again, I want to take this, the P1 connector, and that's on the goes onto the main board. It's got the 3.3 volt, 5 volt, and 12 volt power connectors. I'm just going to mount this in here. And if you can see the tab here, I just want to make sure that the tab goes in the correct place on the main board. So I'm going to snap that in place. And you can see past my hands here, but see how the clip, just make sure it's snug and you know, you've inserted it in right where the curved and the straight edge connectors go and then the pen snaps into place. So 3.3 volts, 5 volts, 12 volts, now I've got a 12 volt P2 connector I need. And this has other connectors that for this main board I don't need, but a lot of power supplies will come with extra connectors just to give you the option and to make them compatible with, with different kinds of main boards. So in this example, let me find the, here's a P2 right here. And this has got the 12 volt power that I need to complete supplying power to the, the motherboard circuits. And that just snaps in there. You can see, again, the curved and straight connectors there. And the next thing I need to do is hook up my hard drives. I'm going to make sure that they're powered up as well. I don't really need these guys here. So you can, you know, I could just tie those up later with a wire tie, get them out of the way. And I want to do that eventually to allow for, you know, proper cooling of my machine. 